friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's been a hot minute since I put out my last video and um, no excuse, just life has been busy and um, I haven't made time to record. So here I am today. I'm gonna start off this video by saying hello. Thank you for joining if you are new here and if you are not new here, I appreciate you and your support. Um, but I'm gonna start off today's video just introing this vlog. I'm gonna kind of talk through a lot of things in this video. Um, I don't really know what the whole video will entail quite yet but there's a couple things I definitely want to hit on and show you guys but first things first I need to head upstairs to my apartment they have like a coffee machine up there I'm gonna brew some coffee because it actually shuts off at noon and it's almost noon so um, I need to go brew a cup of coffee so that I can make my favorite protein coffee and I'll show you guys how I make that <laughs> So here is what I do for my protein coffee is I have this little shaker bottle and I put about four ounces of unsweetened almond milk in it. Um, and then I added about a tablespoon of this Cake Pop Pea Science Protein, my favorite flavor currently. Um, I also use it in the creamy. So I only use like a little bit in my coffee since I use a half a scoop um, later in the day for my creamy. And I try not to have like more than a scoop of protein a day. So that's why I'm only using like a tablespoon or so in this. Um, shook up the almond milk and the protein and I'm going to pour it on top of my coffee and then I always sweeten it with a little bit of stevia too. So I want to show you guys a little meal I'm putting together. I know this does not look appealing whatsoever but PSA air fry your carrots. It is so flipping good. Um, these are just like raw baby carrots that I placed into my air fryer at about 400 degrees for like 10 minutes and obviously take them out, let them cool. They are so good. I like carrots, but I also find that they can be a little bit harder to digest if you're having them in their raw state. And this is going to be standard for any like raw veggie. They're a little, it's a little bit harder to break down. Um, so I always recommend cooking your veggies or air frying them. Um, it really helps with digestion. Um, now what is this you may be wondering so this is actually something I'm trying for the first time well I don't know if it's like the first time ever I feel like I've had this before but um I decided to buy these lentils yesterday at the store um I just wanted to you know try something new and I'm not not going vegan or anything um but I wanted to try just adding a little bit of variety into my diet and lentils are really high in fiber got a good amount of potassium and um also iron in them so they're, they're also like really cheap and who doesn't love that um they actually have a decent amount of protein in them too. I wouldn't say they're like a protein source as it's about 22, 23 grams of carbs per one fourth a cup and like eight grams of protein. So I wouldn't say it's a protein source, but it definitely has a good amount of protein. It's kind of like a macronutrient profile is very comparable to quinoa. So I cooked my lentils um, and then I actually added a little bit of this everything but the elote seasoning from Trader Joe's. This is my favorite seasoning of all time. Um, I added that to the lentils because otherwise they just don't have a ton of flavor. Um, and then I'm going to add in a hard boiled egg and a, hard, a couple hard boiled egg whites. So this is a pretty balanced meal in the sense of carbs, fats, protein, once I add the eggs and egg whites in there. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this. I'm trying to just, you know, try some new things. And that's why I grabbed the lentils at the store the other day. I'm not saying I absolutely love the lentils. I'm not going to lie. Not very, um, not very flavorful, which is why I added the seasoning. Um, but I think it is important to add a little bit of variety into your diet from time time to time, especially if you're not in prep, which I am not. And this is going to sound so silly. I don't like to like chew and eat when I'm on camera. It's kind of weird, gross. I don't know. Um, but these carrots, air fried carrots, I could easily down a whole bag. That is, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I know they look like really weird, but they're so good. If you are somebody who struggles to get your vegetables in, buy an air fryer, air fry your veggies, I promise you it is such a game changer and if you've been following me for a while on this channel you guys know I air fry a lot of different things but air fried carrots so flipping good so I am walking home from the gym sorry if it's like a little loud it's pretty windy today but um I've been walking to the gym I think I mentioned that in prior videos but um I do live within walking distance of a gym which is really nice and it's just so nice especially on my busier work days um just to save time because my other gym is not that far um but it it's just the traffic the traffic is obnoxious so um one thing that i wanted to share so i'm walking back to my car right now my apartment and i'm gonna head to 
to the grocery store. I'm gonna head to Sprouts, um, my favorite. I'll take you guys with me, but I wanna share something I'm kind of proud of. So I actually have not had gum in like a week, which may sound kind of silly to some of you guys, but I'll be very honest. That's like my one, I don't wanna say bad habit, but the problem with me is I couldn't just have one piece of gum. It wasn't like a one piece and done deal. Like I got into a habit of eating way more or not eating chewing way more gum than I should have so I decided I wanted to challenge myself not that there's anything wrong with chewing gum by any means that's not what I'm saying but um it's just it was becoming a little out of hand <laughs> we'll put it that way like I said I couldn't just have one piece like for me it was like I was having way too much so I decided to cut it out and see kind of what happened and because I find that like when I chew one piece, it was like I automatically wanted more, um, or I just wanted to like keep chewing pieces. So I just decided to cut it out cold turkey. Sorry, super windy, um, and see what happened. And what do you know? We are here, one week gum free. So I'll continue sharing that journey with you guys. Okay, I just pulled up to Sprouts, you guys. Quick random note: I'm admiring this Jeep. Like they have like greenery on the top. That's so cool. So aesthetic. Okay, just pulled up to Sprouts. I'm like filming at this angle because this lighting is really, really awful when I film the other way. But anyways, I've got my, my headphones ready to go. Um, so some of you guys may know this, but I posted this on my Instagram about a month ago. There's this worker here at Sprouts and Sprouts is a grocery store for those of you that, that don't know. I love it, love, love this place. Um, basically I'm here today to get some of like the things from the bulk section like flaxseed um brazil nuts my favorite granola but anyways i digress there is this older gentleman that works here and you know I'm, I'm a very chatty person okay um i generally like i'll make conversation with anybody as long as they're not weird and creepy um and there's this older gentleman that works here probably like i'd say at least like mid i'd say like early mid 60s right and every time like he would see me here he'd say hi and we would make like just you know general conversation and there was one day about a month ago where he like walked out with me and said oh you know like I've just been so impressed and taken back by how nice you are um to me and I really appreciate it he's like you know would you mind being friends could I have your number and I was like that's 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 a little creepy right like that's where I draw the line I'll, I'll be friendly but like no I'm not gonna give my number to no, that's just weird. Um, so this is like my little, my little hack. I've been putting my headphones on that way. If I see him working, like I can wave, but I'm not inviting conversation. So I am going to, oh, my car is blinking. Um, I'm going to walk in, grab my stuff and I'll show you guys what I get. So I'm getting my flaxseed meal. Fun fact. Flaxseed meal is what you want to get. Um, up above here, we have the regular like flax seeds, and your body can actually not digest these super well. Um, so always get the flaxseed, like the ground flaxseed, aka the flaxseed meal. So I always like to have like a half a serving of this a day. Really good. It's really good like as a superfood, but it's also um, rich in fiber and just really good for digestion overall. So this granola, the apple cinnamon raisin drizzled granola is my absolute favorite. I love getting this every time I come here. And because my carbs are pretty darn high, this is like one of, this is actually a really good way for me to like help me to get in my carbs. Um, so it's pretty, pretty carb dense, pretty low serving size for a decent amount of carbs. So favorite granola of all time. I love it. All right, good secured. I didn't get that much, but I'll show you guys what I got when I make it home, but he was there, but we we made it out in a in a safe manner. So that's the good news. So a very random, very small little haul, but mainly I just needed to go to Sprouts to get a couple bulk um, things. So I got some nutritional yeast. I love nutritional yeast. It's very rich in fiber and also B vitamins and it tastes really delicious. So it's really good to sprinkle on top of food. It kind of tastes like a nutty cheese. I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, and I got some of the flaxseed meal, as you guys saw. Um, of course, got my Brazil nuts, had to stock up on those. 
You guys know I love Brazil nuts. If you did not know, two to three per day is the it gives you the amount of selenium you need in a day. Um, and selenium is really important for thyroid health. So I've been doing these like two to three a day for the past year. Um, I got some more baby carrots because I I'm so obsessed with my air fried carrots right now. And then I did get some tofu, and then I got my granola that I showed you guys as well. You guys, it is that time of day. My ninja creamy. This lighting is a little odd. I think it's just because I have the overhead lighting. But look at that fluff factor. There we go. There's kind of a another better view. You guys, if you want this recipe, it is on my Instagram. I posted a reel on this exact recipe. So go check it out. Okay, my friends, so I want to kind of wrap up by touching briefly on something that happened to me last week that was very interesting um, I want to share with you guys. So last week, I, so just to preface, I went off hormonal birth control about a year ago. I was on it for like seven years. And, you know, when you come off of being on something like that, it can take a really long time to regain your cycle. So I am really focused on regaining my cycle right now. And I think I'm about to like get it because last week, I had basically what I would call like a ghost cycle. So like I had all the symptoms of a cycle, but I didn't actually have my cycle. And sorry if you're, uh, you know, a guy watching this, but I feel like this could be interesting to you guys as well. But basically my point is I had all the symptoms of my cycle. Um, I was so bloated. I cannot remember the last time I was this bloated. I literally felt like I had a film of water over me. Now, the interesting thing is I took my progress pictures last week, which I will put them above. And I remember checking in with Paul and I was like, oh, like I did not want to check him, you know? And I'm sure those of you watching who are females, you guys know, like when you're on your cycle and you feel bloated beyond get out and your weight is up, like last thing you want to do is put on your heels in a suit and check in. Um, and Paul was like, oh, you know, with your frame, you know, you're already so like, you know, it's petite, like I can hardly even notice any water. And, and I remember at the time I was like, all right, whatever. Like I could notice it in my physique. But the funny thing is I look back at these pictures a week later and I'm like, you know what? No, I don't even really notice the film of water on me, um, which is just so funny, like how perception changes so much when we look at our own pictures. But my point is I took a couple days off of weighing in last week when I was in the middle of like feeling super bloated because I was like, I just don't need to step on the scale and see that. Like literally there was nothing I could do about the water retention. I'm not gonna step on the scale and cause even more stress. So I took a couple days off and by my check-in day, I weighed in um, so I could have data for my coach. And I was up about like two and a half, three pounds, all right? Like I was just fluid. And um, yes, it was uncomfortable. And, you know, but I knew there was nothing I could do about it. And I was trying to kind of reframe my mindset to be like, yay, this is actually really good. This means, you know, you're probably getting ready to maybe have your cycle. Like I think it will probably come next next month for real. Um, so I'm just gonna keep tabs on that. But it was such a weird week because not only was I bloated, but I was having like every other symptom under the moon. I was having light cramping, um, like achy joints, feeling extra fatigued. So we'll see if my cycle comes for real next month. But um, anyways, I actually just took my progress pictures too for this week. And you know, it's so funny as I weighed in today and I'm not bloated at all. In fact, I feel pretty lean. Um, and I weighed in and I was kind of surprised my scale weight like was up, but I was actually, I took my pictures and I was really happy with them. So I'll put them up here um, because I don't think I've, I've never looked this way at this weight, right? So, um, and my training is so amazing right now. And so this is like one of the first times in a long time I've looked at that higher weight and have been like, you know what? Hell yeah, I'm building, I'm putting on muscle. And I know this is what my coach wants to see. He really does want to see us go up and wait a little bit. So um, all things aside, I'm really actually happy with my pictures, despite that, you know, that weight being a little bit higher. I know I'm, I'm doing my job as an athlete right now. I'm like actually building. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, you know, I'll keep you updated. Who knows, maybe next month I'll actually get my cycle, but um, doing all the things I, I can be doing to regain that. Um, and hopefully it comes comes next, next month. We shall see. So that's a little update on last week. Um, it was just, whoa, I felt like so unlike myself though. There were times I was like looking in the mirror and I'm like, oh my God, like I, I've lost all my definition. And I'm sure a lot of you ladies can relate. Like if you're on your cycle or you've ever gone through phases where you're super, super bloated, um, it's just funny how you can like, your mind makes you think, oh my God, I've lost all my progress in a day. And like, you know that that's not true. Um, but it's really, I mean, it's taken me almost a week to kind of finally get back to feeling normal again. So it, it you know, did happen overnight um that I finally feeling normal again now a week later um and now that I look back at my pictures that I sent last week when like I felt really bloated 
at the time I looked at those pictures and I was like, oh, I can see like I'm holding a film of water. But now I look at them and I'm like, I don't really even, I don't see that. So um, anyways, so that is my little update there. So I wanted to share that with you guys and also give you an update on my progress pictures from last week during that really weird week. And then also this week when I, you know, I'm feeling a lot more normal now. Okay, friends, I want to wrap up this video here. Um, two things I want to touch on before I wrap up this video. One, I will have this video out before the show so I can say this. Um, but if you are going to be at Clash in Orlando this weekend, I will be there. Come say hello. I will be around for at least I'm going to come for prejudging. I'm not sure if I'm going to stay for finals because when I drive over there, it's like an hour, hour, 15 minute drive. So there's like a big gap in the day between prejudging and finals. So I'm not sure if I'm going to stay the whole day, but I'm at least going to come for prejudging for the amateur and the pro show, which I'm super excited that this season is picking up and we have like bikini pro shows almost every weekend now. That's always exciting. I feel like, you know how some people get really excited at the start of like baseball season or football season. Well, that is not me, but that is me towards bodybuilding. Um, I I'm not gonna lie, like I love people that love football, I love people that love baseball, that it's just like I'm not I'm not really into it, I'm not. Um, but I am so hardcore into bodybuilding, that is my thing. So if you are gonna be there, come say hello. Um, I will try and get some footage for you guys. Um, so at some of the shows that you know, I am going to go to this year. I really want to do a lot of show day vlogs. Now, I will say that um, I have to be respectful, obviously, of the promoter. So sh some shows have live streams and they are a little bit strict about like not recording. Um, so of course, like if that's the case, I'm not going to record. So I know this show this weekend has a live stream, but I think as long as I'm not like actually live streaming it on my phone, if I'm just getting video footage for YouTube, I don't think it will be an issue. So I'll try my best to vlog this weekend and just, you know, that way, if any of you guys watching, like you guys want the show day experience without having to go to the show, you can have it. Um, and I also know some of you guys, you know, you don't live in an area where there's a lot of shows. So this could be like the next best thing. So that is that. And then second off, I want to touch on something I saw on Instagram the other day that I think was like so like it was just so well put um I saw a girl I forget her username off the top of my head so I apologize but she posted something about you know how this time of year um it seems like a lot of competitors like are always getting asked well when are you getting on stage again right when are you competing again and that can be a hard question to always be asking competitors right because I think that's part of the reason some people feel like they need to be competing all the time to stay quote-unquote relevant right and kind of like I'll take my scenario I don't know when I'm competing next like obviously I'm gonna get on stage again um it's just a matter of time but it's a matter of how much time do I need off stage to really make the improvements that I want to make right and you know I guess what I'm trying to say is I've learned throughout my years of bodybuilding that like it's okay to take a year off, you know, even though that doesn't sound fun, um, that's where you're going to make the improvements, right? And like, honestly, if you're an amateur bikini competitor and your feedback is something like, hey, you need to just go and grow and build a little bit more muscle everywhere. Like, I hate to say it. I know this may ruffle some people's feathers, but you need to probably take more than two to three months away from stage, right? There are people out there that will take two to three months off of stage and call it, you know, oh my God, my building season, right? And like, that's fine. Some people can get away with that, especially if their feedback is not to go and like build a ton of muscle. Um, that's why you see a lot of pros taking shorter improvement seasons or time, times away from stage. Cause like their goal is they don't need to put on a ton of muscle, right? They just kind of need to fine tune, right? Therefore they don't need to really take a year off of stage unless they want to, right? But you know, I hate to say it, if you're somebody who gets the feedback of like, you need to go and just add more size, you're probably not gonna do that in a couple months, right? It's gonna take longer than that. Now, could you compete again, you know, by only taking a couple months off? Absolutely, but I don't know what you're gonna expect. Like you probably can't expect to step on stage looking any better than you did the last time, right? And that's why I always feel like bodybuilding is one of those sports where like delayed gratification is such an important and valuable like trait to have. So anyways, that's, um, that's what I want to dis discuss and close this video out with. But anyways, um, I seriously freaking love you guys. Like, yes, I said it. I love you guys. My YouTube family supporters, you guys are literally the best. I always appreciate all the comments on my videos and just know that I appreciate you guys so much. So, um, anyways, comment below if you enjoyed this video, comment below if you want to try, or if you want me to try and vlog this weekend at Clash and just with the show days, um, coming up this season as well. Um, but I hope you guys have a great, rest of your day wherever you're at in the world um, as always my discount codes my coaching link um, are in the description box below um, but I will catch you guys in my next video